Tom, thank you so much for speaking with Sky News. You've talked about a revolution afoot. What would it take to deliver that, in your view? Two things. One, free and fair elections. We want people of Pakistan to decide who governs them. We don't want a bunch of cro crooks imposed us on us by buying uh, loyalties of about 20 of our, of our members of parliament and spending about 20, 30 million dollars and toppling our government. And known crooks, 60% of cabinet is on bail. So it, we want rights, we want the same, the powerful to be brought under the law. At the moment there are two laws in Pakistan, one for the poor which don't have access to justice and the powerful are above law. How far are you willing to go to deliver change? Well, it's a, you know, it's not politics for me, it's a mission. You know, someone like me who the Almighty blessed me with everything, uh, I never had to go to politics and I never would choose politics as a career, but it was a mission that we want this country to have justice and law, uh, the rule of law. And my, my contention is that prosperity comes after rule of law. First, you have to establish the rule of law. My contention is that most of the developing world is poor because they don't have rule of law. The government are concerned about violence. They've talked about credible terrorist threats. Are you worried about that? The only terrorist threat for us is the government and the handlers. Uh, we have no, why would anyone want to, uh, you know, with families, children, women, you know, if you see the people who are with us, why would anyone want to target them? So it is just the government which is petrified. The government is petrified of the people. They are petrified of uh, elections because since I've been ousted from power, we've had 37 by-elections. We have won 29, despite the government being supported by the establishment, the powerful establishment, you rarely ever win against them. The election commission is totally biased. Despite that, we have won 29 out of 37. So the last thing they want are elections. And what the country wants are elections because right now the political uncertainty is destroying our economy because they are, the political uncertainty has led to economic uncertainty. And all economic indicators are that we are heading down. So. There is only one way out of this mess and that are free and fair elections. You've raised the possibility of bloodshed. Do you think that likely? Uh, what would it take to stop this march? There is absolutely no reason why there should be bloodshed because it is my right, constitutional right, to protest peacefully. I'm confident, I'm confident that, uh, and I've been on the road for six months now, uh, what I've seen, I'm confident that I will be able to direct it through elections. I will uh, be able to direct this through elections and bring about a change. But, you know, uh, the other possibility is, uh, you know, you would not want it to, to go the other way. Your critics call you corrupt. They say you are in part responsible for some of the economic woes of this country. Is there anything that you would do differently? Well, firstly, we inherited a bankrupt country. And all this is, by the way, every year is published the Economic Survey of Pakistan, where you have all the, the economic growth rate, uh, industry, agriculture, the growth rate, and so on. So it's all documented. Every year, it's published. All you have to do is see what it was in 2018. The country was bankrupt. Despite two years of COVID-19, in, in, in our third and fourth year, it's documented, we, in 17 years, we had the best economic growth rate of 5.7% and 6%. We had the highest exports in our history record, highest tax collection in our history. We had highest remittances, in other words, dollars coming in from overseas Pakistanis. Uh, the agriculture was growing at four and a half percent. This is an agricultural country, which is after 17 years, the best agriculture growth. From that position, 
When we were removed, the country collapsed. Today we are heading towards default. We will not be able to pay service our debts. Industry is going down, exports going down, remittances. So where we left, that was the biggest conspiracy against us. And uh, the reason why you see people, they see the difference, you know, where the country was heading then and now. So just to be clear though, there is nothing different you would do if you rose to power again? I would do one thing, well, I would not take power if I was at, I had a weak government like I had before. It was a coalition government, thin minority, always, I was not strong enough to implement rule of law. I could not bring the powerful mafias under the law because they were, they would, uh, they had all ways of uh, weakening me or blackmailing me. So I would only take power this time if I have the numbers in, in the National Assembly. And if you are strong enough in a parliamentary democracy with a clear majority, only then can you implement rule of law, which I could not before. The election is less than a year away. Why can't you wait? Because for us, we are gaining every day. Out of uh, 37 by-elections, we have 129. Uh, and every the writing is on the wall for the whole. The entire opposition combined stood against, I, I, I uh, took part in nine, nine elections, nine elections, just no, nine by election. And I stood on all, we can stand on all the seats. A one man can stand on all the seats. Out of nine, the entire 13 parties stood on one side with the establishment backing them, the powerful establishment. And I won out of nine, eight of them. We have won 29 out of 37 by-elections. So it suits us because the government is going down by the day, which is why they don't want to hold elections. But the country is going down. We are, we are heading towards bankruptcy, towards default. So for the sake of the country, the only way out is for the economy to recover is to have political stability. That will only come through elections. When there's a stable government, then only can the economy recover. Do you think, given that you're confident the elections will come early, do you think you'll be back in power next year? I, I feel that if there are free and fair elections, I mean, any if you see any polls in Pakistan, you will see that my, my party is way ahead of all the other parties put together. So yes, I feel if there are free and fair elections, we'll win. But then, uh, you know, you're, you never, I mean, as a sports person, I know that until the match is over, you, you're never sure. Needs a lot of stamina. Yes, stamina, and yes, I, I never thought at my age I would be doing this again. And no regrets, no change, it's full steam ahead. No, no, no regrets. I mean, I, I have tried my best. Uh, you know, the country has given me so much. I have more love and respect than any other Pakistani in this country and so I try my best, you know, for my country and I know the only way out is justice. The, the only way you can liberate people is by giving them their rights and that comes through rule of law which protects their fundamental rights.